ladies and gentlemen, this is your host Nino, welcoming you to the death of this Pocket 386. For it is showing again a message that has been an issue before, namely no signal. You are correct if you're guessing that the beeps mean that the system is actually booting. It is. In previous moments, there was this cable between the monitor assembly, this little black cable here, and the motherboard, that with a little bit of wiggling could cause the no signal message to disappear. Now, no amount of wiggling would would make it work again. In the middle of making a video on FreeDOS, I just clapped the machine together and then clapped it open again and then I'm getting no signal, you know. How bad can your hardware engineering be? I I'm really asking myself, like how many things can go wrong on a comparatively simplistic 386 laptop? The Pocket 386, while being absolutely fascinating as a system, aesthetically beautiful, while being very, very nice as an experiment platform, seems to be beneath all criticism in terms of hardware design. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm not going to tell you, oh, maybe, maybe we should give it a chance. The thing is, when you get it, and I would understand if someone gets it for nostalgia purposes, be aware that hardware-wise, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. I have made a couple of other videos where I am showing you systems working on it and I hope you find them entertaining. But this is pretty much the end of these videos because always something is. First, the previous graphics card got super, super hot and then simply stopped working. No signal. I tried it later again. Now it wouldn't work again. I, you know, in my despair right now, I tried it too. And then the monitor cable would start playing funny and, and what not. The battery is, is actually quite hard to reach when this thing is built together. Like it, it has its own place, but its connector, the thing that matters is somewhere way behind where you need at least pincers, you know, to, to, to get to it and so on and so forth. I could go on about this forever. And I think that at least for the time being, that's the end of Pocket 386 videos by me. I can't actually recommend the hardware. And now in the coming moments, you shall see how things went crashing. And in the coming videos, you shall see the last experiments I was able to do with this before it ended up the way you see it here. Ladies and gentlemen, despite my sincere efforts to be friends with the Pocket 386, I'm continuing to get the infamous no signal message. And what I clearly have as feeling is that the cable leading from the motherboard to the monitor, when mon montaged, when, when assembled, has been overly twisted. And now, now this is the result. And I am tired of these hardware issues. So I'm considering to do something very radical, to simply cut off the cable somewhere close to where it is coming out with the wires, replace all the wires and then boot it up and hope for the best. Perhaps I was too quick to judge. My multimeter here set to the sound symbol in order to check wire continuity is showing continuity for every wire. I put in here two needles, which should signal whether something is interrupted or not, but all of the needles positions were signaling intact wires. And so, ladies and gentlemen, on Friday, the 13th September, <laughs> 
The Pocket 386 dies one final time. I don't know what is up with it. I mean, I resoldered the connectors. I tried the cable and it turned out that it should be working just fine. I disconnected and reconnected the battery. But no matter what I do, I'm getting the infamous no signal. Let me just connect you the battery and show you what it looks like. So that it is, ladies and gentlemen. The computer is, by the way, apparently booting, but doesn't do anything. So there's no display. And I'm giving up on it. I must tell you, I think the machine is beautiful. The experiments with old systems on it are very interesting, but the quality of the hardware is beneath all criticism.